Today, I have a very, very special guest that I'm interviewing, and he's all the way in New York. Given the time and the distance, we did it online, and you're going to get a good insight as to how he went from skeptic and hardcore researcher to a believer in energy healing and how it can heal cancer. Today, I'm privileged to be speaking to Dr. Bill Bingston, and he is a researcher and the president of the Society of Scientific Exploration. Tell us about what being on that Society of Scientific Exploration means and what they're actually looking for. Well, uh, about 35 or 40 years ago, this is slightly before I joined the society, but 35 or 40 years ago, a group of um, pretty big name scientists got together and said, we, we have too much editing in academia. We have too much censorship in academia. And some things are just off limits. Uh, so we're not supposed to look into things that, that, that bring down the scientific establishment. And they said, this isn't good. And, and so a group of people from Stanford and Princeton, University of Virginia, places like that, said, let's form a society where we can openly look into things which are challenging to the way we understand the way the world to work. So for example, healing. Healing doesn't make any sense. Uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It just means we have a great deal of difficulty trying to understand it. Yeah, my, my niche is in healing, uh, but it, as with anything in the society, uh, it has to be research-based, has to be data-based. So we don't just make stuff up uh, and, and say, I believe this or I believe that. If you're gonna uh, uh, present we have an academic peer-reviewed journal. We have uh, a magazine for the general public. We have these annual conferences. And if you're going to get up there and talk about it, you got to talk about data. Show me what you did. Show me how you did it. Uh, and, 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 and show me your stuff. Uh, it, it's not a hypothetical society. It's one based on rigorous science. Um, tell us about some of your amazing research and some of the work that you've um, been able to achieve and accomplish over the last decade and beyond. Well, it, uh, a long time ago, uh, I uh, came across somebody who spontaneously developed healing powers and he, he fixed my back. And that was kind of rude, you know, because I, I had walked around with a bad back uh, for many years. I had actually given up a swimming scholarship in college uh, because of a bad back. Um, and this guy came and I was in just aching pain most of the day. And this this guy rudely came along, put his hands on my back. And I haven't had a back pain since. And and so, what do you do when something like that hits you in the face? I didn't I didn't seek this out, uh, but one one possibility is you pretend it didn't happen, and the other possibility is you try to figure out what happened. And yeah. for better or for worse, I went down the second road uh, to try to figure out what what in fact happened to me. And so, as he developed into a healer. I developed into a watcher and then eventually someone who joined him in the healing and we, we tried to figure out, you know, what does this stuff work on? And so a uh, human patient after human patient, uh, there's an inexhaustible supply of people in pain out there. Uh, and people started to come to him then started to come to us and we found out this isn't magic in any way. Some things respond pretty quickly, some things respond not so quickly. Some things respond not at all. Isn't one homogeneous magical category where you know you go hocus pocus and everything is fine? It, it, this is the healing is amenable to scientific study and to try to figure out what are the patterns, what are the rules, uh, what 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 actually goes on uh, when healing happens in in our system. And I'm not speaking of anyone else, any other kinds of healing. And I don't even know how many kinds of healing there are, but but I've focused on the stuff that happened to me. Uh, it turns out in, in this particular system, we're, we're good at some things, not so good in other things. The things we're good at tend to be growth that can be taken away, inflammation that can be taken away, things that you don't want that you can take away, we're very good at. And so for example, any form of inflammation will mm. almost immediately disappear when we do our healing technique. I've studied this in uh, some medical schools and I've done it with cell culture and, and I've tried, and I think as far as I'm aware, this may or may not be accurate, but as far as I'm aware, I think that our healing technique is the fastest and strongest anti-inflammatory known. Wow. It, it simply gets rid of, of, of inflammation. Thanks again for your time. Um, it's an absolute pleasure. I'm Bas Tadros for Undercurrent.